Oh, you beautiful doll, you great big beautiful doll. <laughs> so, what do you think? I'm speechless. I have had a complete makeover. Sylvia in the flat next to mine used to be a beautician. I'm living in a posh neighborhood now, so I thought I should make the effort. Well, you're not worried about chemicals in there. Sylvie is an obsessive compulsive as well. <laughs> if it's all right with her, then it's all right with me. She is a genius, so she is. What have you got in the trolley? A shopping. I've just been to the wee shop down the road and taken home with me the night. Have they not got shops in your new neighbourhood? Oh, aye. Well, then would it not make sense to do your shopping in the local shops? Aye. But they won't serve me. What? They won't serve anybody from Hillcrest. Not the paper shop. Not the late night shop, even the local GP's a bit frosty on account of him being chairman of the residence committee for getting our planning permission reviewed. You can't stand for that, Rosalie. You've got to tell them. You're not going to take any more of this crapola. Aye, that's what I told the man in the paper shop. But he told me to bugger off. He swore at me, Campbell, which I think was uncalled for. You going to ask him to move you then? Move me? You're joking. I've got a bath and toilet in the same wee room and a washing machine on the premises and a microwave. Do you know what a microwave is, Campbell? You put your dinner in and then microwaves make the wee molecules jiggle up and down. It's a bit like ECT. Eddie! What do you think? Jim said I looked like a film star. No one that had been in the Betty Ford Clinic once too often, but a film star! You look very nice. What's up with him? They're closing us down. How? They're turning this place into a treatment room. That's how the workmen were in here. They are there. We've got a week to pack up and be out of here. You mean I'll not be station manager anymore? No. What are you talking about? We're not going to lie down and play dead over this, are we? We've built something here, Eddie. When I go around the wards collecting requests, I'm a celebrity. And you know how? Because we give folks a voice, and now the hospital is telling us to shut up. Well, what can we do? We can declare UDI. We can turn ourselves into an independent charity like most hospital radio stations in the country. Demand a site, and then run the station the way we want to. The only thing stopping us is lack of dosh. It's also the only thing stopping me paying my milk bill. So we stage a fundraiser like we did before. Uh, I've got it. A radio phone. You mean like a telephone without any pictures? Aye, we'll broadcast from 10 in the morning till 10 at night every day till we raise the dosh. We'll contact mental health charities, we'll enlist celebrity DJs, we'll ensure we get coverage in every newspaper in Glasgow. Campbell, if my name appears in the papers again, I'm out of a job. Who cares? You're going to go to lunch with Paul on Monday. You'll have another job. We don't know that, Campbell. She said she was going to have good news. Have some faith, Eddie. This is our moment. And how do we need to save the station? Station isn't just you and me, Eddie. I can't give him a Campbell. Aye. Well. You with me, Rosalie? Aye, I'm with you. Then we'll do it ourselves, Eddie. And I'll talk to Francine as well. my age with breasts that sit up like hungry dogs, put in stockings. <laughs> Grandma, you can't do this. You can't just get on a bus to Lithuania carrying 3,000 pounds of hard currency. It's too dangerous. In 1946, I travel in cattle truck from displaced persons camp with nothing but stones in my pocket. What could be more dangerous? <laughs> Grandma, this is crazy. Uh, you stop that or I put you in soup and eat you. Uh, I tell you what is crazy, Eddie. It's crazy for grown men to keep useless animals in Lithuania. Animals are to work or to eat. <laughs> oh, come along. 
We go to bus station. What's wrong? I don't know. Just didn't think you'd really go. I tell you, many times. Hmm? This is it to leave bags here. I say goodbye now. Grandma. What is it? I may never see you again. You see me for 38 years is no enough. So, you want work radio? Oh. Then work radio, but you must find wife or you will be lonely. Ask crazy one to be wife. I thought you didn't approve. To have you, lassie needs to be crazy. And get rid of cats. If God meant us to live with animals, he'd give us four feet. <laughs> Day three, hour number 29 of the St. Jude's Hospital Radiothon. In 15 minutes, we're going to have another two hours of patients' party pieces, including Hector, who will be doing a selection of his best juggling tricks. Well, I should certainly be worth listening to. I'll be back again at five, so keep sending me your requests and dedications, but most of all, send us your dosh and rescue our radio. So you should be. I think... What happened to you? Jim came round and we had a disagreement, but it's all sorted out now. Jim hit you? No. Some wee boys came over the fence and one of them started making faces at me through the window. So I went out and we disagreed about whether he was on my property and then about whether I was a loony who should be locked up. And then he threw the stone. And we disagreed about whether I was going to let Jim throttle him or not. The kid threw a stone at you? Aye. But I'm from Donegal. When a stone hits your head, it's the stone that's in trouble. Hello. I wanted to volunteer to do a party piece. Aye, what do you want to do? I want to play my ukulele. That's a fiddle. It is. But you're welcome to play it tomorrow at quarter past six. Is that okay? Aye, quarter past six. Don't forget your fiddle. What? what? Your ukulele. How's it been going anyway? Desperate. It's been like that all day. Loads of volunteers to sing the Postman Pat theme in 11 different languages. But where's our celebrity DJs? Where's our star interviews? Where's the bloody press? But the contributions have been pouring in. They've been slipping them under the door and a whole load have just arrived in with the post. How much have we got so far? £97.27. pence. We may have to do something drastic soon. A real restaurant, eh? No styrofoam boxes. No a clown in sight. I'm glad you like it. You even get cutlery. <laughs> I haven't seen a fish knife since my second cousin married the buffer station. They had a sit-down wedding dinner for over 100 guests, which included me, age nine, dressed in the suit I made my Holy Communion in, which was by then about uh, two inches too short in the sleeve and the trousers. They serve fish with a fish knife. I've never seen a fish knife before. Never even seen a fish that didn't come out of a newspaper before. I was incredibly nervous. Are you nervous now? Uh, no. Aye. <laughs> we bet. But Campbell says it'll be OK. If his lunch is good news, coffee is bad. You know nothing of ordering coffee, are you? <laughs> Eddie, we've all had a good listen to the show that you and Campbell did the other day. I was shy, I know, but we were nervous. We could do a lot better. It was fine, Eddie. But as I said, we'd have to wait for a slot. And now... a slot, yeah, I understand. No, there is a slot coming up as it happens. David Thompson is leaving to take...